Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Well, it looks like many of you enjoyed our first video on the Mafia bosses' nicknames. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you should definitely check it out. Now today, we wanted to discuss another topic that we found to be extremely interesting, and that relates to the traditions that were cherished within the Sicilian Mafia. Now to be clear, we're going to focus on the old school traditions versus the more current trends to show how some rules used to be strictly enforced back in the day and may no longer be relevant today. Now do note that these rules are not listed in any particular order, so they are equally important irrespective of the order they, that they appear here. So let's start with number one, membership rules. Now to become a member of the Sicilian Mafia, you needed first and foremost to be brave and determined. And often after having committed a murder, although that's not always required of the members of the Mafia, who are lawyers and other professionals, often referred to as the clean side of the Mafia. You needed to have an orderly and transparent family situation. Now the old school Mafia didn't accept any instability in marriage or families more broadly that could expose the organization and its members to betrayal for reasons of jealousy or revenge. Now interestingly, Tommaso Buccetta, who was a Mafia heavy hitter, was heavily criticized and indeed sidelined from the Mafia because of his numerous affairs and because he was divorced from his wife. And finally, the lack of any relationship with any police representative, described with the pejorative word spiri, which means cops. So number two, the admission ceremony, which consists in having the new member burn an image of a saint and then get a finger prick so that blood can drop onto the image. The new member will then say an oath that will seal his membership. I swear to be loyal to Cosa Nostra. May my flesh burn like this image if I betray this oath. Number three, membership only ends with death. You cannot leave the Mafia. A member of the Mafia remains such irrespective of where they live, in Italy or even abroad. Now interestingly, Michael Francesi, who used to be a, a member of the American Mafia, who left the organization and managed not to be murdered as a result, said very clearly that he would never travel to Italy because he knows his life would be in danger. As he indicated during that interview, the Italian Mafia may decide to punish him for leaving the Mafia and of course the punishment likely will be death. Number four, as we discussed, no member can disclose to non-members his membership of Cosa Nostra. The violation of such a rule is punishable with death. And it's important to explain here so that you understand how we know these rules that is from a number of turncoats or pentiti, including Tommaso Buscetta, the most famous of them all, that we have knowledge of these rules. Now, as just mentioned, Mafia men are not allowed to discuss the Mafia with outsiders and aren't even allowed to confirm its existence. And if you're wondering who Buscetta is, we discussed him in one of our other videos. You should check that one out. So, continuing on with rule number five. Members of the Mafia, or men of honor as they describe themselves, need to be fully honest and cannot lie when they discuss Mafia-related business. If they're not, they can be labeled as tragetiatori, excuse my pronunciation, and can be sanctioned, including, of course, with death. Number six, no introduction between members is possible without the presence of a third member that can vouch for the membership and reliability of both parties. And this ensures that members can get to know other members in a way that's safe for the organization. Number seven, the old Sicilian Mafia also prevented members from moving from a family to another. Now this rule became significantly weaker once the Mafia Wars started and different members were forming alliances with the various dueling factions. And this rule was weakened even further during the murder spree the Corleonesi of Totta Riena went on in order to secure control over the Sicilian Mafia. In fact, many old school mafiosi like Tommaso Buscetta accused the Corleonesi of destroying some of the old and cherished rules of the Mafia because of an insatiable thirst for power. Number eight, when a Mafia boss was arrested and incarcerated, his lieutenant would take over the family and run it like he was the boss. However, the boss could have given his recommendations from prison that would have had to be taken into account and the boss could have asked the underboss to explain the reasons for his decisions once he was released from jail. Now this phenomenon raises another interesting theme which is the implementation of hard prison terms for Mafia members in Italy. In fact, once prosecutors understood that bosses 
could still influence the operation of their families from inside prison, they imposed very restrictive prison sentences under the 41 bis regime that would severely limit the rights and freedoms of incarcerated bosses in an attempt to limit their contact with the outside world. Now we can discuss this set of rules in more detail if you're interested in hearing more and do let us know in the comments below. Number 9. Mafia members could not pretend to be crazy while they were imprisoned in an attempt to avoid punishment. Now note that this rule slowly faded away and there are numerous cases of mafiosi that did pretend to be crazy to get lighter sentences. And again on this topic, Tommaso Buscetta had a, a very critical view. He stated that the propensity of Mafia members to hide from punishment was a, a sign of the loss of traditions in the Mafia that he viewed as a, a very bad drift. Now there's a very interesting story of Tommaso Buscetta being able to literally control prisons in which he was detained and managing to negotiate better conditions for inmates, which is really interesting and a topic for a future video. That said, Buscetta was not supportive of escaping punishment by using the trip of the trick of acting crazy. Number 10. Mafia members could not request the help of the official justice system. Now they could only do so if their vehicle was stolen, and this was justified by the rationale of not being accused of a crime committed with such vehicle. Now as you know, all vehicles are registered, and so you're likely to be accused of a crime committed with your vehicle if you don't report it. Stolen promptly, of course. Now, a pretty telling story that reinforces this idea is the story of the wife of Mafia boss Mich Michele Greco. Now, she used to buy clothes that would be sent to her via train from another town. And once her package was stolen whilst it was being delivered, and instead of reporting the theft and thus being entitled to obtaining a refund from the insurance, she chose to pay for the clothes even though she never received them. Now, some of these old Sicilian Mafia rules were maintained in other branches of the Mafia including the one in the US. And before our American friends start telling us this video is not accurate because in the US Cosa Nostra had different traditions, I will reiterate that we are talking about old school Sicilian Mafia traditions here. And if you do want us to cover the traditions of other Mafias, including the one in the US, please do let us know in the comments down below. Now, a couple of other rules relate to the process of deciding serious crimes, including murders. So at number 11, no major criminal activity could take place within a region controlled by a family without the permission of the boss in charge of that family. Now, if these rules were not honored, the price often, of course, was death. An example is a number of regular thefts, uh, thieves that were murdered in the 1980s because they had committed burglaries without the permission of the relevant mafia family. Number 12. No murder can be committed without the permission of the boss, who even has a say on the place where the murder is to be committed. Now, one rule which is more of a legend than a truth was the one that the Mafia did not kill women and children. And there actually have been several exceptions to this, so although the old school mafiosi will claim that this rule was carefully observed, that has increasingly come into question. And finally, when murders of prominent people, like policemen, judges, journalists or politicians, when they were ordered, these orders had to come from the Mafia's governing body, known as the Commission. And the Commission would also hand-pick the members of the murder squad, without needing to inform the bosses of the families these Mafia members belonged to. Now, in many of these high-profile murders, there was a clear attempt to cross-staff the killing squads across families to ensure that all of them were equally guilty and equally incentivized not to reveal any secret information in exchange for immunity. So there you have it. I do hope you enjoyed the video and if so, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We do appreciate it. And of course, let us have your views in the comments section below. We do read them and we do listen to your comments. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please all stay well and safe till our next video. We'll see you guys next time.